Now, look, we have known for a while, ever since Ahsoka made her guest appearance on Mandalorian and uttered the name Thrawn. Everybody's been wondering who's going to play Thrawn. Who's going to play Thrawn? Is it Lars Mikkelsen, who did the voice of Thrawn in the animated series? Uh, now, they have gotten other characters, other actors to play characters from Rebels other than those who did the voice of those characters. So maybe yes, maybe no. What is the name of the guy who did the voice for the audiobooks of the Thrawn? Is it Mark Thompson? I think it was Mark Thompson. By the way, if you guys have never listened to the audiobooks of the Thrawn series, there's two canon Thrawn trilogies. There's the Thrawn trilogy, not Heir to the Empire. That's non-canon. Some of the greatest Star Wars books ever written, by the way. But then there's the Thrawn trilogy, and then there's the Ascendancy trilogy. And an actor by the name of Mark, I believe it's Mark. Mark it is Mark Thompson. Yeah. An actor by the name of Mark Thompson does the voice of Grand Admiral Thrawn in those audiobooks. And listen, whatever you think about Star Wars, they are the top of the heap when it comes to producing audio novels because they put full production. It's like you're listening to an old radio drama. Like they put full with the music and sound effects and everything. And Mark Thompson as the voice of Grand Admiral Thrawn is fantastic in it. Utterly fantastic. And I'll go so far as to say this. Does anybody want to, and I ask this, this isn't a rhetorical question, honestly. Is, is, does anybody think there is a more iconic, better, non-canon era character than Grand Admiral Thrawn. I mean, I remember when those books came out, which was the heir to the empire books, which is for those of you who didn't read them, that's why Soka says, he's the heir to the empire. Oh, she said the thing. <laughs> um, the heir to the empire books shook the Star Wars fandom world because I mean, they were the first kind of books that were things happening outside of the movies that really made a serious, serious impact. And they're fantastic. Now the Grand Admiral Thrawn, in canon now is different from the Heir to the Empire. The Heir to the Empire trilogy, even though it's some of the greatest Star Wars books ever written, they're not canon. So that, that's different. But he is a glorious character, just an unbelievable character because he is mortal yet seemingly invincible. And it's all based on intellect. His into that's those are the characters and the villains that always scare me most. So the ones who are smarter than everybody else. And Grand Admiral Thrawn is smarter than everybody else. He's smarter than everybody in the room. To a degree, he even kind of outsmarted the Emperor. If you listen to the uh, or read the Thrawn novels, he even kind of outsmarted the Emperor a little bit. I mean, the Emperor went kind of toe to toe with him mentally, but he even got close to that. He deduced everything about Vader and Anakin Skywalker and all this kind of stuff. He is a fabulous character. Well, now. The official news has come out. It is indeed Lars Mikkelsen is playing the character of Grand Admiral Thrawn. And there was, I forgot to bring the picture with me, damn it. There is even a picture of him that they uh, aired, that they showed at Star Wars Celebration. But we don't, I forgot to, I found the picture online. I was going to show it here, but I forgot. Anyway, looks good. He looks good. Uh, Lucasfilm has now confirmed Lars Mikkelsen will play Grand Admiral Thrawn in the live-action Disney Plus TV shows, bringing one of the greatest villains of the expanded universe to life. Lars Mikkelsen is Grand Admiral Thrawn. There, are, and there he is coming out on stage, and a lot of people are very excited. Now, of course, this means the Mikkelsen boys, because, yes, he is indeed Mads Mikkelsen's brother. The Mikkelsen's boys are now both will be in Star Wars live-action. Mads, of course, was in Rogue One, and now Lars is going to be uh, in Ahsoka, but I have a feeling he's probably going to end up being the villain of that Dave Filoni Mandalorian movie, too. I think he might end up being the big bad uh, of all that. They might even reveal... Look, nobody's told me this. It's just me as a fan <laughs> speculating. I would be surprised if we get introduced to Grand Admiral Thrawn in the um, season finale of Mandalorian this year. Uh, because, I mean, why not? Nothing connects so far in this season, but they could do that. I'll tell you what, man. I... I love this character. I've loved every iteration of the character. The way they used him in Rebels was absolutely fantastic. Uh, there is a little bit of a disconnect between the Thrawn in the books, which are also canon, and Rebels. Because in Rebels, he does come across more as a clear villain. In the books, he's really not a villain. He's just chosen a side. He's chosen the Imperial side, but he's got 
a code of honor and a code of conduct and stuff like that. He well, actually those are the does best some... villains. What's that? Those are the best villains yeah. because they are very, very steadfast in their belief system. Yeah, and he's not particularly evil. Like he, he's even quite kind to people quite often in the books. But you know, in Rebels, but it's, Rebels is an animated show. They tend to draw the lines a little more distinctly: good mm-hmm. guy, bad guy. I hope they do when they use him in live action in Ahsoka. I do hope they show a little bit more of that nuance that he's not an evil character per se, but you're right. Those make some of the best, best antagonists. Anyway, Chris, you heard about them getting Lars Mikkelsen, which is interesting because like we said, um, for the other live action iterations, they didn't get, go out and get the voice actress for Hera. They instead got Mary Elizabeth and I love me, Mary Elizabeth. Same. They didn't get the voice actress for Ahsoka. They went and got Rosario Dawson and I love Rosario Dawson. Mm -hmm. Uh, they didn't go and get the voice actress for Sabine Wren, but I, she looks great. The actress who's playing her, I think she looks great in the trailers. What do you think about the decision to get Lars Mikkelsen? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, as of last week, he was still doing the whole, oh, I don't know if I'm in it, <laughs> which uh, this is why I don't trust or love anyone. All of you are liars. <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. Lars Mikkelsen is an actor who has proven time and time again that he works well in any medium and he understands how to adjust for those mediums. You know, whether he is in The Witcher or whether he's in numerous you know, Danish films and television shows, or when he's doing this voice acting here, he is incredible. And he really, really understands how to work within all of those different forms. So I'm very, very excited about this. And also, this is a character where you can see how he kind of already looks like the animated form here. He's got those cheekbones. We're just going to make him blue. We can make this work, right? Sometimes in voiceover, you're playing somebody who looks wildly different than you. And I can understand sometimes why we maybe adjust for those kinds of casting things to have somebody who meets the stature or, or the physicality of what you're going for, right? In voice acting, we're just trying to imbue that in with our voices. When you're on camera, you have to have a little bit of the whole meat suit package, if you will. Um, But I think this is going to be really, really fun. I'm so excited about him. I think he's incredible. I also, though, would put in your, like, characters who we need to see in a film, right? We've got, what, Darth Revan? Is that the one from Darth Revan, yeah. And then Mara Jade. Love Mara Jade. Mara Jade's difficult, though. It's very tricky, but... Because, the, because I enjoyed her. Mara Jade, for, for most fans, is so connected to Luke. Yeah. And they've already gone a certain direction with Luke. So now you'd have to either find a way to introduce a Mara Jade and shoehorn her into the existing Luke story. Or you have to just, well, do what they did with Grand Admiral Thrawn, which is change the story. Mm-hmm. Like Because remember, Grand Admiral Thrawn's story is completely changed like, from what it was in the Heir to the Empire. What's Luke doing right now? He doesn't have a student. Go out, go mingle, buddy, and make it be Sebastian Stan. Because what do they call her? <laughs> the Hand of the Emperor? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Hand of the Emperor, right? So there, there's a story there to tell. Maybe she's been, I mean, pull a idiocracy or something. She's been frozen in a cryo chamber, a Captain America, if you will, for mm-hmm. a while. And now she's woken up, confused, discombobulated. What do you mean the Emperor's gone? Yeah. And, or, or, I mean, yeah, I could do some and cool stuff. And you can stuff totally there. do a one-off story, too, about one of his, you know, assassins, essentially, running around the universe. Oh, and then have her fall in love with a Mon Calamari. <gasps> oh, wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, that's love another one. Love. I'm trying to think of other ones. I mean, Cad Bane was another one that they Ooh, did yeah. a really good job. Of, so short-lived, though. Yeah, very, very short-lived. Literally short-lived. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that. But I'm telling you, Thrawn is the guy. If it wasn't for Vader in that universe, I mean, he would, he would just himself be the ultimate Star Wars uh, villain. Anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this news? They went out to get Lars Mikkelsen, who did the voice of Grand Admiral Thrawn in Rebels, to be the actor to play him. This is the first time they've done that. I mean, yeah, you can say Zeb, but Zeb was still just doing the voice. I mean, it wasn't the actor doing it. So, I mean, this is kind of a first for them. Do you like the decision? Did you have somebody else in mind? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Manscaped. Gentlemen, if you didn't already know, it's tax season here in the US, and you know what that means. It means that Manscaped is here to make sure your paperwork is done and your boys downstairs are having fun. Make sure you spend your tax return money on the important things in life, like family, friends, and ball deodorant. Join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAMPIA. Guys, you know I love all my Manscaped products, from the body wash to 
to the lawnmower, an elegant tool for a more enlightened age. So what better way to invest your tax return than into yourself? Manscaped has the full package from head to toe to make sure you get your money's worth this April. The Performance Package 4.0 is the ultimate bundle you need to reinvent yourself and your confidence. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is the star of the show, offering a precise shave on all your widest hedges, equipped with an LED light so you can navigate in and out of those difficult areas with ease. The Performance Package 4.0 now includes Manscaped's brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 ear and nose hair trimmer. And don't forget, for all my international friends out there with a little bit of scruff, Manscaped now has beard products. The start of spring also marks the start of Testicular Cancer Awareness Month in April. Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to bring awareness to testicular cancer, men's health, and early cancer detection. So get 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. Don't just get your money back this year, get your swagger back too with Manscaped.